All right, we're recording. So, this video is about potential energy and kinetic energy. So let's first write these equations down. Uh, let's see, potential energy is equal to mass gravitational times gravitational acceleration times height. And, of course, we need to, we're dealing with mass and potential energy, we need to convert our pounds mass to a pound's force because we're looking for energy and energy is uh, foot pounds force. So we include G sub C. Kinetic energy is equal to one half mass velocity squared. And we also once again need to convert our mass to a force convert a pounds mass to pounds force, so it's going to be over G sub C. So a cleaner way to write kinetic energy would be kinetic energy is equal to mass velocity squared over 2 G sub C. Law of conservation of energy. So the total energy in a, of a system of a thing uh, that is at rest above a reference zero is there's no kinetic energy, it's all potential energy. So, but the law of conservation of energy says that uh, energy can be neither created or destroyed, it can only be converted, and so we can convert one form of energy to another. Now, when you look at the whole general energy equation, it's a lot more than just potential energy and kinetic energy, right? When you look at the, the general energy equation, you're, we're talking about internal energy, we're talking about work in a system, we're talking about flow energy, along with uh, potential energy and kinetic energy. So kinetic, or potential, kinetic, flow energy, uh, internal energy, which is heat of a system. And quick review, don't forget that this is enthalpy. Enthalpy is a nice, is a simpler way of taking all of that into account, along with work, uh, heat minus work, heat in minus work out. But this is our potential energy, this is our kinetic energy. Anyway, when we're talking about a bigger system with a lot more going on, you, we bring in those things. But if I'm talking only about an object above a reference zero, we're at rest right now, then it's all potential energy. There's no heat energy, there's no internal energy. It's not a, there's no flow, there's no, it's not a dynamic system. This is a static object above a given height. So it's potential energy. So everything else can be eliminated and just consider potential energy. If I drop this, the potential energy is going to be converted to kinetic energy. And at that fraction of a second before it hits the table, all the potential energy is gone and it's all kinetic energy. But whatever energy that existed, at, the, at this state of the system, still exists at that state of the exists at that fraction of a second before it hits the table, right? Um, so, all right. Potential energy, kinetic energy, and let's solve a couple of problems. Oh, before we shall solve a problem, I wanted to show you something. Some of you have picked up on this. Um, maybe and, and made things a little easier for yourselves potential energy equals kinetic energy well that's it's pretty straightforward a lot of you get that but that means that this equals this so let's write that out mass gravitational acceleration and height over g sub c right potential energy equals mass velocity squared over g sub c 2g sub c, which is kinetic energy. So that equals that. Well, interesting. If you look at, you know, how you do algebra, things on both sides that are common to both sides can be canceled out. Mass can be canceled out. Huh. G sub c can be canceled out. So this equation can be simplified to gravitational Force of acceleration due to gravity times height is equal to velocity squared over 2. Well, 
this makes things a lot easier because then I, you don't even I don't even have to give you a mass. You can solve these problems without giving a mass. As long as you know one of these terms, uh, you have to know either the height or the velocity. Now, a lot of times I don't give you the velocity, which is why we're working through potential energy to come up with kinetic energy. Um, but yeah, if I do ever give you either velocity well, yeah, if I just give you height, that works. So let's solve for velocity. Straight from height. Okay, so let's rearrange this. 2GZ, right, equals V squared. I'm going to eliminate the squared. We'll go. So square root of 2 times acceleration due to gravity times height is equal to the velocity. Write this equation down on your equation sheet. That's a simple way to get to the velocity. Well, let's work it the long way just to make sure this works. Uh, I just dropped, I picked up a package from Amazon, a small bookshelf, and I just dropped it on my foot, right square on my freaking big toe a little while ago. So this little tiny bookcase thing, 14.5 pounds mass, dropped from a height of 3.5 feet. Let's take a look at what the potential energy is and the kinetic energy and the velocity. Let's start with potential energy. Mass, 14.5 pounds mass times 32.2 feet per second squared times 3.5 feet. Uh, we need to change our pounds mass to a pounds force. So G sub C, 32.2 foot pounds mass per pound force second squared. Let's see what cancels out here. We got pounds mass cancel out. Uh, one of these feet cancel out, second squared cancel out, 32.2 cancel out. My units I'm left with are foot pounds force. Perfect. I went and got my, uh, dug out my old flight school calculator, so now I actually have a real calculator to work on. 14.5 times 3.5. And that's it, right? Equals 50.75 foot pounds force. So that's what that stupid box, the force of that box uh, was. That's the potential energy it had while I was holding it before I stupidly dropped it. All right. Now let's figure out what the kinetic energy is. Well, we already know potential energy equals kinetic energy. So the kinetic energy is equal to 50.75 foot pounds force in that fraction of a second before it hit my toe. Initially the kinetic energy is zero, right, because it's all potential energy, but as it gets converted uh, then it's all kinetic energy. Let's calculate kinetic energy though. Let's see or not kinetic energy. So now let's calculate velocity the long way. So kinetic energy is equal to mass velocity squared over g sub c, 2g sub c, and we need to rearrange this. So I'm going to move the 2 over here, move the g sub c over here, I'm going to move the mass over here, and I'm going to move the square over here. So the velocity is equal to the square root of 2 g sub c times the kinetic energy, 75 foot pounds force, over the mass, 14.5 pounds mass. Let's do this out in the problem. So 2 g sub c, 2 times 32.2 
foot pounds mass per pound force second squared. So I got that, I got that. 50.75 foot pounds force, 14.5 pounds mass. Were there any other? Let's see what I'm left with here. And it's going to be the square root of that. So I'm left with foot squared over second squared. So that's equal to the square root of 2 times 32.2, 64.4 times 50.75 over 14.5. All right, let's do that on the calculator. 64.4 times 50.75 equals. Divided by 14.5 equals. So, equals square root of 225.4 square feet per second squared. S square root of 225.4 equals 15.01 feet per second. And when we're doing this, of course, square root gets rid of the squares on those. So the velocity is 15.01 feet per second. Um, so we did this the long way, right? Let's check that shorthand way. Where did that go? This way. Let's check and see if this works for the velocity, given just the height. The square root of 2 times 32.2, 64.4 times the height, 3.5 equals, look at that, 15.01 with a lot less math. So write this equation down. Uh, maybe write down on your equation sheet, just off to the side, these different iterations of working, you know, eliminating terms to simplify the equation to solve for velocity. That was faster than I expected. So that was potential energy and kinetic energy. Um, is there anything else? Yeah, that's a bookshelf at 14 of uh, 14.5 pounds mass from a height of three and a half feet. Yeah, all right. And that showed you two different ways to to solve for velocity, um, how to manipulate the equation, and hopefully that helps. All right, thank you.